what is going on, everybody? Welcome. Fair, 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 fair. I'm starting off with a fair WTF. Yes. Welcome to Funkatopia. Yes, welcome to Funkatopia. No, I really need to redo a graphic here and make it so it says welcome to and then Funkatopia on the bottom here and just kind of make this graphic that's just – and we, we keep using this one for whatever reason, but it's uh, <laughs> all good. How have you been, man? I've been good. How you been, man? It's been a while. <sighs> Sandra, miss you too. Absolutely. And uh, Megan, hi. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we, we've kind of, uh, yeah, there's lots of folks that are in the house. Uh, hello, all you fine folks on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, later on, on Odyssey. Did you know we were on Odyssey? I did, I not, did know. not know that. Yeah, we got the, <laughs> so all the radio stations do Odyssey. And uh, we apparently uh, don't do, uh, we, I, I wasn't aware that we did uh, uh, Odyssey. And um, oh, wow. so, yeah, so it is what it is. All right, this oh. time around, I am actually going to start the uh, broadcast on the actual radio station. Hold on a second. Awesome. Welcome, one and all, to a Funkatopia Live. Oh, well, look, look, I got it. There's a little area here that even says a Funkatopia Live. And I'm going to say inside Prince's Vault. Yeah, and there once we. again, fur, 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 fur. <laughs> WTF. <laughs> Welcome to Funkatopia. And uh, yeah, so tonight, this is a topic that I, I've done before. There's a bunch of weird uh, documents and pages and whatnot that are out there that kind of have a lot of weird things that are inside of Prince's vault. And we kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that we know for a fact that are in Prince's vault. Uh, talk a little bit about Prince's vault. And because there were some really weird things that I saw that kind of popped up on uh, somebody had done a comment on one of the posts that we had done on Facebook. And um, I was just, someone said, look what somebody posted. And I, I don't normally click stuff, but for whatever reason, I was in a clicking mode. So I was just like, all right, I'll click it. And uh, <laughs> it was a, a person that was, has gone through the process of creating a map of the inside of Prince's vault and then along with that map was a spreadsheet that essentially had a list of everything that was in the vault that he was able to visually confirm through photos and stuff. And I was just like, I just, people just, uh, it's just so much. It's so much. It's just, it's crazy how much is in there. So we're going to talk about some of the things that we knew were in there. Some of that stuff is not represented on uh, the actual document. We're going to have a little bit of fun with this. It's going to be a, a good time. But, you know, obviously we start out the show uh, doing a little bit of news and just kind of touching base. The first thing I want to mention is thank you guys so, so much. This was not on the list on the script that we normally have. We have a script that we normally have. Uh, as you can see uh, behind me, I'm actually in the vault. Uh, for those visual folks, uh, yeah, I'm not in the vault. Uh, the the beauty of green screen, but, uh, <laughs> I actually use one of those high res photos from the vault, and it makes it look like I'm sitting inside the vault. Uh, now, come on, tell the truth, man. You're the undocumented item in the vault. That's, that's who you are. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's it. Yeah. So I'm I'm actually in there gathering dust with everything else that's in here. <laughs> Um, but one of the things I wanted to give a major shout out to all of our Facebook followers because um, many people have saw that uh, saw that I was on Facebook a long, long time ago, and I think I was up to about like seventeen thousand followers or something like that. I it was it was pretty high. It was it was pretty significantly high, and um, got kicked off. <laughs> Right. Uh, pretty much for the same stuff I'm doing now, but um, I'm still here and uh, still kind of, you know, riding my toe up to that line like mm -hmm. I always have. And uh, over this past weekend, um, since we had to start over, we, uh, this weekend we crossed the 20,000 followers mark, and uh, which is fantastic. Fair, 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 fair. Yes. Yes. 20,000 followers on Facebook, which I know there's plenty of folks out there that have tons more followers than we do. But again, we had right. to start over and right. that really sucked. So if we didn't have to start over, I think we'd be somewhere around the almost 40,000, I would think somewhere around there, somewhere between 35 and 40,000, but we had to start over. So 
that kind of sucks. And uh, I never really embraced Twitter. I still friggin' hate Twitter. And um, <laughs> uh, my daughter gives me grief about Instagram. You need to get on Instagram. You need to get on Snapchat. You need to get on this out. Uh. TikTok. So, and- <laughs> yeah. So you know, I'm not big social media guys. I'm, I'm, I'm just not. I just I'm not a fan of social media, although face the activity on Facebook would tell you otherwise. Um, not a right. huge fan of, of social media, but I do try to make it so that if you are following us on Facebook, Facebook dot com slash Funkatopia. Um, yeah, thank you so, so much for following us. But also there are tons of people that are even in this chat room right now that did not um, that have not are not following us on Facebook. Which That's I don't weird. understand. It's it like, makes no sense. It's weird. weird. Every single week. And I just, I need you guys, if you're on Facebook, I need you to click on that follow button. Um, or The like one's fine too, but the follow one is, is the most important because that helps us, you know, reach you guys. Um, right. And it also helps us reach more people and the more the merrier. And we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, so all that being said, thank you guys so, so much. But there's a ton of you that have invites in your notification box for Facebook and you have not clicked on. Yes, I will. Just Come on guys. Just click it. Go ahead and click, click it. it. You click know, you want it. to click it. Yes. And YouTube obviously, <laughs> you know, is, is a big bear. Uh, also, that's something that I just never embraced at all. Um, you know, I was talking with Michael Dean about this uh, a while back and, you know, I, he used to take, he'd take his audio from his two, three hour shows. And he would just have one photo that's up there for the whole entire thing. It's not switching. It's not a, a slideshow. And I said, uh, I just, it just doesn't do anything for me. He goes, you'd be surprised how effective that is. I'm like, really? It's just right. like, this is something right. to look at, but I mean, it works. It has worked for him. It's gangbusters. So uh, I am creating these little tidbits and smaller video clips, but that is a lot of work. So, um, I'm working on it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Um, it's just, it's just a lot of work because um, what I can tell you is uh, I'm going to fast forward down. Um, well, actually I'll wait. I was going to well, fast yeah. forward down to the last bullet, but uh, let's maybe. just say that, that being said, please follow and then, and go to YouTube, like, and subscribe. We, we know you can watch the show, but it helps us to help you. How's that? How's that? So uh, yeah, make sure you do that. Get it all done. Help us. us. Help, help us help you. you. Help us help you. Uh, a major shout out to uh, the one and only uh, Spencer Derry, who uh, many of you know as, um, you know, he created a lot of the uh, the really funny, uh, not funny, I guess, um, just very vibrant mm-hmm. types of uh, graphics and stuff that Prince wore. I think this is the one that he was wearing in uh, um, New Orleans. Uh, but yeah, so he is a, a big fan of Funkatopia. I actually interviewed Spencer Derry um, years back, and for whatever reason, and I'm not, you know, not don't want to say anything that's going to get him in trouble or whatever. But you know, all of a sudden, he they the powers that be kind of put the kibosh on him and said, if that's the right word, uh, it's good enough. Yeah, I think I I'm pretty sure it's terminology for stopped him. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, they just said, you can't, I, we don't want you talking about this stuff anymore. You can't sell this stuff anymore. You can't, it's like, you, they just essentially said that there was like all this stuff that he could not do. Yeah. They said um, enough is enough. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know what the reasoning for that was. It was kind of annoying, um, because, you know, you see all these, uh, all these artists and all these, uh, people that were photographers even for a, a limited period of time that released these books and people that released these entire books and stuff. And they're able to say and do whatever they want to do, but for whatever reason, um, you know, it's kind of, I don't, I don't know what the reasoning is. Uh, and there may be some legalities for it. I, I don't know. But anyways, I interviewed a Spencer years ago and um, this is a, some more stuff that he's done. He also had the poster for the musicology tour. Mm-hmm. There was also, if you saw any of the third eye girl shows, he had that big, huge. Um, it's not a character. What, what's the what's the word for it's? It's just it's just basically just these graphics. It's just really 
Um, but the big backdrop behind Third Eye Girl when he was playing for that. But uh, he actually created a Funkatopia, a Welcome to Funkatopia banner for YouTube and Facebook and also Twitter. And mm. it was very, very cool of him to do that. He did not have to. Um, he did not have to do that. And it was just so cool for him to kind of go out and, and do it. And one of the reasons why, I mean, I kind of asked him because a while back, you know, I think it was in, I actually had this graphic here. Um, we were doing a music interviews, concerts, and more on the funked up app back in 2017. It was called in Prince's honor. Mm. And it was like, it, for, it was an entire month of his music which is not that big of a deal in hindsight now. That's pretty easy. <laughs> uh, but he created this. Uh, he created this really, really cool graphic way, way back, uh, you know, years ago. And um, so I, I said, do you have happen to have this graphic without uh, the writing so that I could, you know, pull it into Photoshop and add some more writing to it? And he was just like, uh he said, I, I, I can do that or I can create a brand new one. <laughs> I love he it. created this one. And I was like, okay, that's cool. All right, I'll take it. Yeah, that's all good. So uh, thank you so, so much to Spencer Derry for creating those really, really cool uh, art pieces. And uh, you can find him pretty much all over at, uh, he, he was Third Eye Boy on a lot of different, a, a lot of different places and also is there's third eye boy or spencer dairy art d-e-r-r-y spencer s-p-e-n-c-e-r d-e-r-r-y art so spencer dairy art or third eye boy and then just uh, check out some of his stuff he's got some really really cool stuff some of it's kind of um some of it's really borderline erotic kind of like um uh the pancake artist um why am I drawing a blank? I'm sure that uh, our, our people will. Uh, the, the pancake artist. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Dan. Dan Lacey. <laughs> right. Everybody he, knows. Uh, he was very, he, he had a, a lot of erotic stuff as well. So mm -hmm. It was like a lot of erotic stuff that he did, which is, I think that's just an artist thing. And, um, you know, so, yeah, it was. Dan uh, Lacey. Yep. Susan just came. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I already said it. No, it's fine, but it's it's like a delay. It's fine. It's fine. I no, muted you. I did, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. We should use his logo, man. That that's our background. That's our backdrop. Yeah. Why not? Sure. I mean, th there it is. That should be it. Uh, I don't know the guy's name. Is it? Um, I'm I'm gonna allow people to do this because I don't really know his name. The guy that creates the web series called Once Upon a Time in Minneapolis. Who? Oh, yeah. Who is the guy that creates that that series? Um, I, I got to know. Anyways, the, the, the point of this being is that I got a notification indicating that somebody had uh, had linked to the YouTube page, and I was like, okay, well, I'll check this out. Um, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll check it out. And um, I, I go on, and I see that the new episode of Once Upon a Time in Minneapolis features. Uh, it's mostly our interviews with yeah. Gilbert Davison and uh, also uh, Alan, Alan Leeds. Alan I think. Leeds. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, all right. Um, but it was cool because at least in the description, he said, here's the full interview for on Funkatopia. So that was, that was cool. So for those who are, who are big fans of that, web episode once upon a time in minneapolis so if you've never checked it out you need to it's very very cool it's a lot of work i don't it's, yeah i don't understand absolutely. it's like a lot of work that that guy um, um yeah. cynic yeah. yeah cynic 22 i think i remember um and frigo says cynic please interview cynic yeah i would love to um yeah well he was putting but, in the work for sure yeah i know yeah his <laughs> name is cynic 22 but i don't remember what his exact name but real name is but he puts in a lot of work creating these once upon a time in minneapolis episodes that really go deep and he's it's not only it's not just pulling all the pieces together and and but adding the visuals to it and then also taking the individual interviews and somehow being able to completely comprehend the chronological order of things right it's you know to take six interviews and to take the pieces out of those six interviews and put them in a chronological order and to tell a story is just, I, 
unreal. I just don't understand. That's a lot of work. It really is. It's amazing, but it's a great, it's a great video. I mean, it's, it's good stuff. I liked it. Well, yeah, there's a whole, but there's a bunch of episodes. I don't, I don't yes. know how many total episodes there are. I think he has, he does seasons. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just a bunch of different seasons and stuff. So it's all you fine folks out here, Philadelphia is in the house. Congratulations to your Phillies uh, today who beat right. the Braves today in game one it's the it's not over it's not over but uh at least game one you got it in your pocket and that's enough to be said because certainly they didn't even give you guys that so hats I off know, right i've already been emailing eric leads and giving him grief <laughs> uh, I'm like hey so how are your dodgers doing there, how's buddy? your dodgers <laughs> how are your dodgers we'll see you in just a little bit there fella uh, <laughs> just kind of just poking at him i love poking the bear yep, um but it. yeah so it's really really cool it's a uh, once upon a time in minneapolis is um uh, is kind of going uh, really really well for for uh cynic and the newest episode is is pretty much funkatopia stuff that's uh, awesome and so here's the last piece of information that i have before we go into the show tonight which we're going to be talking about prince's vault but here's a last piece that i wanted to share with you is that today this morning at 9 a.m i <laughs> Yeah, I interviewed the one and only Hans Martin Buff this morning. Uh, I had, yeah, I had to do it. Ha yeah, I, I had to do it too. Um, right? I had to do the interview at nine o'clock in the morning because he is in Germany and nine o'clock in the morning here is three o'clock there. Um, so we actually sat and um, we talked for a little bit. And then we did an interview. It's about an hour. It's over an hour and a half interview. But it's uh, for those who don't know who Hans Martin Buffett he Buff is. He is he was Prince's in-house engineer from 1996 to 2002 or 2001. I want to say. So he was the one that did. Um, you know, he started out as an assistant engineer there, but he was uh, the engineer for. He was behind the board for Emancipation. He was behind the board for Raven to the Joy um, 2000 and also the uh, the albums as well. He had Lenny Kravitz stories. Uh, he had uh, obviously had print stories. He had lots of editing stories. And so lots of really, really cool stuff. So I have a full interview with Hans Martin Buff that I'm going to be releasing probably later on in the week. Or um, because right now we're waiting for we're waiting for confirmation for something on Tuesday because um, mm -hmm. there's somebody that may be coming on the show on Tuesday. And I want to wait to see what that that's going to, that's going to transpire. So we'll just, you know, but you anyway, it's got a great interview with Hans Martin buff. And you guys are going to love. It's just me. I didn't want to wake up Jeff. <laughs> he, he just kissed me and rolled and left the bed. And I was like, where'd he go? <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back. Don't, don't change the channel. <laughs> don't. <laughs> make me some eggs. <laughs> Can you make your French toast? It's so great. Uh, yeah, that's horrible. That's <laughs> <laughs> yes, Hans Martin Buff. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun and um, expect it. The interview's done, so it's not like. Uh, something's going to happen. It's done. So it's not, it's already pre recorded. So that's the only unfortunate thing because I know you guys like to uh, be in it. And, uh, but unfortunately, we had to pre record it because of the hour difference. Because at eight o'clock here is like two o'clock in the morning there. And he's just like, yeah. I'd love to, but, right. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's an old guy. He's an old guy like us. You know, <laughs> once you cross over your 50s, staying up till the wee hours in the morning is like, Hey there, you whippersnappers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You stay up to 11 o'clock and you're burning the midnight oil. Yeah, the midnight oil. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, Cammy, if that's you, uh, I, I thought that disconnecting yes. and reconnecting Facebook would fix that issue, but apparently it did not. Uh, it still shows your name as Facebook user here on this side of things. But I think it's only a StreamYard thing. I think if you're on uh, Facebook, everybody can actually see who you are. Yeah, actually, actually on Facebook, Cammy, you, you're fine. I can I can read everybody's name. It's it is just in our interface. Yeah, it looks like it. So yeah, yeah. So it's just a streamyard thing, and you know maybe they'll be able to fix it. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you are here to talk about. We are all here 
to talk about the one and only, oops, I didn't mean to put that up there. Uh, the one and only Prince's vault. And, you know, the fabled vault is not fabled anymore because <laughs> now that he has uh, left this mortal coil and uh, passed on to the dawn, we know that the vault does actually exist. And we also know uh, technically that there are more than one vault. Uh, according to Prince, there is more than one vault. So they've cracked open that vault, but apparently, according to Prince, there are others as well. Mm. Um, I have no idea where they are. For all we know, it could be a, it could be hidden inside of Paisley Park somewhere, inside of a wall that has like some type of secret. I don't know if you knew this or not. That's the round building. That's the one. I, yeah, they've been inside, in and out of that building. So they, <laughs> they know that's like, I don't even think that thing's air conditioned. Uh, but I do know that um, the video area, which you did not get to see the last time that you were up in Paisley Park, but a lot of people have seen the video editing area of Paisley Park. If you walk into, uh, um, I, for those that have been to Paisley Park, I, I'm going to hopefully walk you through this visual. But for those that have not been to Paisley Park, I'll try to walk you through this visual. You walk through the front doors of Paisley Park, which is where the part that juts out. Um, on the far left hand side of the building and you walk in through those doors and you walk into a lobby and then to the right of the door is stairs that go up onto the second level which is where some of the rooms are there's also a lot of storage up there and whatnot but on the bottom floor you kind of go straight and you can go into the kind of the, the foyer area i guess but on the left hand side was a room that they weren't even completely familiar with that it was even there. Uh, that was because they, I, I guess, after his passing, they kind of came in with some blueprints and they were like, wait, there's apparently a room here. And they found, mm. uh, attached to the video editing room, they found a hidden wall that they were able to get into that had a bunch of videos in it. Well, and it's like, so... I would uh, call me crazy, but I would believe that there may actually be a there may actually be more rooms that are hidden like that that are just let me let me just say technically the wall wasn't hidden because they wouldn't <laughs> I mean the wall wasn't hidden yeah there's a hidden I mean, room from behind a wall I think <laughs> it was a mystery wall it's a yeah that's what it is yeah <laughs> it was. Uh, but yeah, so it's it, the dungeon. My guess is that there's probably some other little components like that. But the reality of it is, is that there is tons of stuff inside this vault. Um, I asked, I wasn't going to bring this up, but um, Susan Rogers um, was going to surprise drop in tonight. Um, but unfortunately, she had to, um, she had a, a, an event today um, mm -hmm. happening exactly at this time because Susan has a brand new book called This Is What It Sounds Like, What the Music You Love Says About You. It's a brand new book that she has, and it actually has print stories in it and everything else. But Susan was the one who actually started the vault. So the vault that we all know and love was Susan Rogers' idea. And the primary reason why it even existed was because of the fact that Prince would always go, hey, uh, go get this recording of this or go get this or go find this. This is like a, a base thing that I was doing and we had this on recording. And if it's not here, it's probably over at Warner Brothers and just have a guy come and go go get it. Just get a courier and they'll go get it. And they'll bring it over. And and it was just creating so much of uh, so much time. Yeah, inefficiency. Kind of, yeah, it was just so inefficient. And yeah. so Susan just said, let's do this. Let's um let's do this Let, let's just create a vault that actually has uh, it actually has a door it actually has you know a lock on it it will stay temperature controlled which we obviously found out not to be the case uh, <laughs> but you know we'll, it will all be everything will be great and anytime that we need anything we will just simply just go into this vault and we will actually just just get it yep um everything neatly cataloged and right ready. Exactly. That that was that was actually the goal. Uh, mm -hmm. 
SMS 130 says there are several rooms that he was referring to as the vault. That's why he said that there were several vaults because those rooms had not just audio recordings, but also video stuff as well. Correct. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, and yes, yeah, Susan, there was a hidden room off of that editing room. And if you look at the cam, if you look at the screen where the video editing was happening in that room on the left hand side, I think it's open now. So it's not hidden anymore. They leave it open so you can see inside. Um, but that's where that room, they weren't even aware that was even back there. So it's very. I, Audrey yeah. suggested that uh, it was not, a, it wasn't a secret room. Dave Hanton built out the space so Prince wouldn't see all the equipment. I wonder, uh, so yeah, who knows? Well, you know, those Paisley Park tour guides are a bunch of liars. <laughs> That's so <right>. who knows? <laughs> Here, here's what we know. Tell us anything. <laughs> yeah, it's, just, just tell us, tell us what you want us to hear. Um. Uh, anyways, so we know that as it stands, when we talk about the vault, we're kind of talking collectively about things that are out there that may not necessarily be in the room, kind of like you see behind me in a room where there's like lots of tapes and and videos and all those other stuff. Uh. It, it, it could just collectively just exist within Paisley Park uh, or Iron Mountain or, you know, wherever things are, are scattered about to and fro right now. And I believe that pretty much everything that was in those vaults currently now exists in uh, Iron Mountain, if I remember correctly. Right. But essentially, we have multiple unreleased albums that equal over 8,000 songs. If you can even wrap your head around that. Uh, there also is 50 five zero fully produced music videos that still remain unreleased. So, you know, you know how much money it costs to produce a video. Right. And, and there are 50 of them. I mean, there's 50 of them <laughs> and they're done and they still have yet to be released. Um, there's also some other ones too, like the you know the garbage that we had, uh, like for hard li hard life and stuff like that. But well, yeah, yeah, of uh, course. There's just little quirky things like that, but it's yeah, you know, still weird. But but we know there's going to be quality stuff as well. So I mean, oh yeah, there's still all kinds of stuff in there. Yeah. And Eric Leeds said that only of about five percent of what they recorded together was released. He said pretty much the rest of it is the vault. It's just, it's, it's just massive. The stuff that's back there. I mean, and, and we're going to, we are going to go through some of the stuff that we know is back there. So uh, I'm not just being vague and broad right now. We're going to talk about that, but I kind of want to give people a little bit of a glimpse. Maybe there's some people out there that don't know all of some of the things that uh, are, are, you know, I, I guess are, are fabled about this vault and exactly what's in there. Uh, so right. trying to kind of do a little bit of a, reader digest version of, of what this thing is. Now mm -hmm. there was a 2014 Rolling Stone interview and Prince said, I've never said this before, but I didn't always give the record companies the best song. There's songs in the vault that no one's ever heard. There are several vaults. It's not just one vault. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like the time capsule stuff. I have a couple revolution albums in the vault and two time albums and one vanity six albums and tons of stuff recorded in different periods, but so much gets recorded that you don't have time to compile everything. Mm -hmm. In the future, you could put all the best stuff from one particular time period together, and then you can release it. It would just be like if we found a Sly and the Family Stone album and they saved their best stuff, if that's even possible. Right. And, and I think that's kind of where we're at now, is they kind of go based on this assumption that based on what Prince has said here, that that's what he wanted us to do. He wanted us to kind of create these super deluxe and deluxe versions that, you know, not only cover some of this material, but, you know, somehow encapsulate some of these things as well. Right. Right. I now, mean, that's a, that's, that's perfect. And, you know, new releases and surprise, um, you know, a video compilation, you know, just all kinds of opportunities for things to happen and, you know, keep us busy for a long time. Yeah. That's all about sure. it. Sure. Yeah. But in Vulture magazine, they actually did an interview with Michael Howe, who is uh, the archivist for the vault. I assume that he's still the archivist for the vault. Um, you know, staff changes like seems like every other uh, year there. But 
uh, when they interviewed Michael Howe, the question that he they asked him was, uh, Prince's personal wishes for how all this music should be commercialized is a big concern to his fans. When you find something like piano and a microphone, they're referring to the 1983 release, hmm. where it's an already completed nine song tape versus you all cherry picking songs for a compilation. Does that signal to you that this is maybe something Prince would have eventually put out himself when the time is right? Right. And this was Michael's answer. Michael said, that's a $64 million question because we don't know with certainty what, what Prince would have contemplated releasing at some point. It certainly was not in his line of sight at the time. Otherwise, it would have come out. He had pretty strong ideas about what was suitable for release and what wasn't. But there are times, and I'm paraphrasing, that he said, all these recordings in the vault at some point would see the light of day after I'm gone. And then he says, it represented the notion that a portion of these things would become available. When are we thinking about what might be appropriate for release? The first question is, is this of the caliber that Prince would have deemed suitable for a theoretical release? Right. Are we doing his legacy justice by putting this out there? Without exception, that's the most important thing that we have to use our best judgment. And so that's coming from Michael Howe. Right. That's not coming from Comerica. That's not coming from, you know, all these people that have had their hands in the pot and now actually have, you know, a financial due diligence or financial, um, you know, wherewithal they have to be able to recoup their money mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so that's the biggest thing right. so tonight we are going to be talking about that's just kind of the blanket description of what the vault is the things that are in the vault prince's feelings about what was in the vault michael howe and the people the powers that be their assumptions as to what prince wanted to be released from the vault all of those things collectively as far as you know just to kind of jambalaya this stuff together you know mm -hmm. jambalaya <laughs> yeah yeah whatever so what i found interesting and what it, and I, I we've talked about the vault before um there was a really some really weird wacky articles that were out there but the reason why i was compelled to basically do this again was because there was a gentleman on prince.org that um, I think I added a T there. I said orged. Orged to beat the board. The Muppets. So, hold on. Let me get some water. Time for a commercial break. Commercial is brought to you by Hello Fresh. Open it up and cook, cook, cook. Um, all right. So there was a gentleman on Prince.org and he created a map of the inside of the one specific vault that everybody's kind of referring to, not several vaults, just the one vault that we obviously uh, know about. Uh, Susan asks, is the org still active? Um, yes, it actually yes. still is there. Um, so uh, I, I, I want to pause here because Stacy just uh, uh, said something here. He said, I found out last <sighs> week that there are no videos of the Atlanta Prince piano and a microphone shows in the vault. Okay, here's here's what I can tell you about this. Okay, I was at both of those shows, which you've heard me brag about multiple times. Shut your fat face. <laughs> um, and I don't recall seeing any cameras there. I'm just going to flat out tell you, I I do not recall seeing any cameras there. I mm. do. I know that it was audio recorded, but there were no like float. You know, normally when they do a camera shoot of something you normally will see like the, the big things and you know, the cameras coming over or, or cameras on, on the, I don't know, whatever. I, I don't remember. I didn't remember seeing any of that like huh. at all. So 
when I heard that somebody said that there was videos of Prince Piano on a microphone in Atlanta, I was like, wow, they just must have been like, you know, like Michael Carbonaro type of hidden cameras or something somewhere. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what was going on, but uh, I, I just said, well, maybe they are here. I don't know. Um, it's you know, anyways, that all being said, I know that the audio exists. Um, professional audio I do know exists of that show, of the Atlanta show. There is a board recorded version of the final Atlanta shows of Prince Piano and a Microphone. I know that for a fact. Mm. Um, and it, the shows are magical. And I'm hoping they don't edit the crap out of them. That's my concern. Is that opening? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Too. I'm hoping and I'm wishifying that they do not <laughs> that they do not edit the crap. <laughs> yeah, Ho hopefully they'll keep it as pure as possible. I mean, that's what you want. You want the show. You want what happened. We want it as it was because it was from your bragging. <laughs> it was a wonderful <laughs> show. It was an amazing experience as it was. There's nothing they had to edit. So hopefully they'll leave it integrity pure, purified. Yeah. Oh. So I wasn't going to, um, we've already kind of talked about the vault, but then every, every, I keep seeing like bits and pieces of, oh, that's in the vault too. And, oh, that's in the vault too. And, oh, that's in the vault too. And I was like, maybe I need to start doing another vault show. And then what kicked it over the line for me was this guy on Prince.org. And I don't know what his name is. I've tried to figure out who the, the guy is. And I, I actually tried to edit the document so that it would send me a, because he put this out online and he shared it uh, as a spreadsheet. And if you try to edit it, it puts up an alert and says, you're not the owner of this. Do you want to ask for permission to edit it? And I said, yes. And then it pops up a window and I said, I really don't want to edit this. I just want to know who you are. And if you'd be willing to come on the show to talk about this freaking map. Right. And uh, no reply. And I, I don't know how long ago this was done, but I'm going to put up a picture of this uh, map that this guy created. It's not anything, you know, phenomenal or fantastic, but it kind of gives you an idea of the room itself vault wise. And I apologize for folks that are on the funked up app. I know there's tons of you on the funked up app. So hopefully you guys will get an opportunity to watch this uh, later on on the video version. But for those who are, only listening audio essentially what you're looking at is you're looking at uh, what we're looking at is a room that is uh, the the dimensions of it are roughly 26 feet by 16 feet and the entire external walls are have shelves along them mm. and then in the middle of these in the room are three separate shelves that each basically contain 68 shelving units, each with five shelves. And there are basically 430 shelves. And every single one of these shelves, not in this photo, this photo just kind of breaks it down in numerical order. Every single one of these shelves, shelves is full of like tapes, like mm. cassette tapes, videotapes, uh, recordings, eight mil, you know, whatever, you know, all, all the analog stuff. It's, yeah. it's just, it's just filled. Yeah. Tape. It's just filled with stuff. It's just, I don't understand. It's crazy how, um, I don't know. It's, uh, it, it's pretty amazing, but what's really kind of cool is that he's got some areas that are highlighted in green that he was able to view from high resolution photos from inside of Prince's vault. So there were, when the FBI went in there or whoever the investigative, uh, you know, whoever the, whoever the, the folks were that were responsible for going in there to take pictures for whatever reason they were going in there to take pictures. I, I imagine it was insurance purposes or whatever it was, but they went in there and they took these high resolution photos. And what this guy did was he took these high resolution photos and then he zoomed in on everything that he possibly could see, and he documented them in a spreadsheet. Huh. And that's just crazy. And that's... I am, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's beyond crazy. I'm going to, for those again, I, I apologize once again for, for video, but I'm going to share 
my screen so you guys uh, actually I'm going to share this address so you guys can go there yourselves uh, if you wanted to check it out I'll share it in the I'll share it in the chat room so you guys can go there and look at it but I'm going to pull it up here so you guys can actually see as well yeah. let me see if I can share this and you guys on the Funkatopia app where again we're not trying to leave you guys out just uh it's just, this is the video. This is what we have to do. But of course, at some point later, you can jump in and take a look and the video will be out there for you later. So, yeah. yeah so, so this is the actual vault itself. Uh, this is the picture that I just showed you. And he had some, he had some notes that were actually on here as well. Um, some different notes, uh, some notes that he put on here were, um, he says, I went through all the published photos and wrote down every single title on the tape boxes that I could read. And so far, there are 884 tapes listed in the spreadsheet. These are just the areas that are marked green on this photo here. Hmm. Just just the areas that are, are, are showing here, Graham. Sorry, it's kind of bouncing around. But just <laughs> only what this 884, just what he saw right here um, in those sections. And um, he said... 340 shelves total. Those 340 shelves have a capacity to hold 4,080 reels of two inch multi track tapes, roughly 10,000 reels of half inch tapes, and maybe around 13,000 reels of quarter inch tapes. Uh, the shelves contain a mixture of two inch analog multi tracks, half inch digital multi tracks, half inch analog mix down, quarter inch analog mix down tapes, and some shelves that didn't have any tapes. I'm guessing mm -hmm. that there's probably somewhere between the vicinity of 7,000 to 7,500 tapes inside the vault. The other guesstimate we heard was around 8,000. He said, in addition to those 7,700, uh, 7,500 tapes, I'm guessing based on the photos that we've seen that there could, there could have been perhaps another 500 or so audio tapes scattered in other rooms, uh, not including the, the video vault and everything else. Um, and then, of course, he said, what we can see and identify from the photos is just the tip of the iceberg, only about 6% of the tapes. And we have absolutely no idea how much more stuff the hard drives themselves contains, because also in those photos, there's actually pictures of hard drives. Mm. And he says, you can look at the vault room layout and the green oval show the shelves included in the photos. The smaller green ovals mean that we can only identify a small number of the tapes on those shelves. Um, and it's just... It's just un unreal. So there's basically photos, there's reels, there's hard drives. And of course, with hard drives, you you probably realize that with hard drives, there is, it could be anything. I mean, exactly. I mean, there could be hundreds, if not thousands of files that are packed onto these hard drives. Um, and on the, on the bottom of this, um, on the bottom of this document, there's another tab that's called the vault catalog. And he actually has the the shelf number and also the position number of whatever was on there uh, that he was able to identify. So if you go over to the vault catalog tab, you can see here. Can you guys see this on the, on the screen? I think that you guys can. Yeah, you can. Um, so you can see, like, there's a lot of things that are on here that are very obvious. He's got you know a rough version of chocolate. There's come Electric right. Tuesday, Electric Intercourse. Don't let him fool you. So a lot of these things we already know. And here's the other thing too, is that we also know that there's multiple, multiple versions of of a variety of different songs. And right. there's some things that we just don't know that are on there. Is some some dates, um, American Music Awards. Uh, there's things that are just simply listed party tape. And it's just unreal. So you can just sit there and scroll for like a really long time on this document that shows you all this different stuff. And I did make some some notations about some of the things that I saw on here that um, that kind of stood out to me. And um, it's just it's it's just unreal. I mean, because this it document is. just keeps on friggin' going. And the fact that somebody dedicated their time to actually doing this. Yeah, it's, that's impressive. That's uh, just, just yeah. I mean, I, you'd think that you'd have to, you'd want to hire some people. <laughs> it's I, like that's not a one-person job. That much stuff, you know. But somebody did it. It's yeah, amazing. Some stuff X Y Z Cradle Robber, uh -huh. Master Tones. 
Here's something interesting about uh, master tones. I, you know, I, I for those who are just joining us, we're talking about Prince's vault. We're talking about the things that we know were in a vault. We, there's also this document that end, that ended up online. Uh, but um, basically, what's interesting about this is that um, Hans Martin Buff, who I interviewed this morning, which we'll release the interview probably later on this afternoon or Tuesday, depending on some other stuff. Uh, anyways, he indicated that he was one of the guys responsible for putting together that loop package, that loop and sample package that was supposed to be released, uh, back in the NPG music club days. They had really, I don't remember what it was like seven ninety nine or was a thousand dollars or whatever it was. And he was completely against it. He was like, this is just not a good idea. This is not this is not a good idea to, to give people this stuff because, right. you know, you get somebody who, you know, you don't like at all. Like some, he, he I think he, the example he used was you get some, you know, Nazi death metal group that wants to use one of your samples in their songs. If they paid for it, there's nothing that you can do about it. You have right. no control over who uses your samples. Uh, but he said that no copy of, no copies of these exist uh, out in that, that were released in the general public. It was made available at the end of a video. You know, they advertised it on the end of some of the videos, but they were never, ever made available. So it's just, it was just never there. Uh, but it's really, really interesting because, um, you know, I, I've heard a Prince sample package, and I don't know if this was part of what they were planning to release or not, but the the clips that I heard were basically things that you would, you know, you knew were prints, like the opening guitar riff to kiss the ding a ding a ding a ding a ding. I mean, you know, it's Prince, right. you know, right. it's not, it's not like you're going to be able to use something of that and go, Oh, they're going to think this is my own. I mean, no one you know, will know. know where it came from. <laughs> Do you know where it came from? That's print. That's Prince's thing. That doesn't make any sense. Right. Uh, so, I think it was a good idea that it did not get released. Uh, a little disappointed because I, I, I will admit that I have, um, I've been looking for it. <laughs> I was mm. like, I wonder if anybody yeah. has it. You know, they had it. I wonder if you know. I, I, I just you know, I wonder if it's really freaking out there or, or anything. Right. But you know, uh, I do actually have. Once again, apologies to all the funked up listeners, but we do actually have some some pictures inside the vault. Um, this is actually the picture of the door that they had to open to get in. And there was a question that I had on the top of my mind. Um, when I interviewed Hans Martin Buff, he said when he was putting together crystal ball, he was also the engineer for crystal ball that Prince let him go into the vault. He said he just went down to the vault and he had, they, he took a cart down into the vault and he just grabbed things from that era and put together the crystal ball album. I think he had a little bit of guidance, but for the most part, he was able to go freely into the vault and pick mm. the stuff that he wanted. And then they took the stuff and they brought it back to the studio. They digitized it. And they, he said, crystal ball took all of two weeks to put together. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Unfriggin' real. I can't wait till you guys hear this interview. There are so many cool pieces, but it took him two weeks to put crystal ball together. And so the question when as he was talking, he was kind of on a roll, and the whole time I'm thinking to myself, I need to ask him, did he know what the code was? Does he remember what the code right. was? Does he remember what the code was? Does he remember what the code was? <laughs> and the story kept going, and I and then I got to the end and and he led me down some other path, and then uh, you know i I didn't ask him. I could Darn. probably text him I'll say, did you remember what the code was? Uh, yeah, yeah, but don't ask him for it though, just because you know. No, I want to know what the code is. Yeah, it's, it's it's done now. They've drilled it open, so it doesn't even matter what the freaking code was. I would I guess like that's to, true. America wants to know what that freaking code is, unless but he that code know, he wouldn't remember anyways. That's twenty. I mean, years. Yeah, okay, <laughs> he's just like I don't remember. It was like some. It was like uh, you know, for the love of Batman or something. Oh, it could have uh, been like one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, four. I love you. Uh, uh, but yeah, so that was the door that they had to um, that they had to drill open. And of course, this is some of the boxes and stuff that are in 
um, for those that are listening, listening only and not watching the visuals, they are, um, you know, there are some boxes you can actually see very distinctly the writing on them. There are more high res photos than what I'm showing here. Uh, mm -hmm. But what's interesting is, is that inside of, they have like cardboard boxes and inside of these boxes is lots of just random stuff that's in there. It's just, it's un, it's just crazy to me. Um, it's just, cause you have no idea. I mean, I'm just looking at this one picture that has two cardboard boxes in it. Actually, there's more than that. Cause there's some smaller cardboard boxes over the left. And you're like, I, I, I want to know what's in those friggin' boxes. What's, what's in, in that, that box? box? <laughs> what is inside this box? Right. It's just crazy to me that there's something there's in, there's something inside these boxes, but, uh, and then of course, here's a little bit more of a, you know, like there's a whole entire, uh, two inch reel right there for neon telephone neon telephone. Right. I, I mean, you, so there's some things that here that you can see very, very clearly that they're. Yeah. Pop very, life outtakes. That's, yeah. Yeah. I see your eyes are better than mine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is, it's just crazy. It's so much, uh, so much stuff that's in there. I mean, there's boxes and here's another one. The boxes and envelopes There's unopened FedEx boxes over there um, oh, that are still tape shot. They literally have yellow tape and they're still tape shut. So it's like the boxes haven't even been opened. So again, they're all, I, I hear, see people talking about Maite said the code used to be her measurements. Um, I, I believe it. <clears throat> if she never grew, uh, I guess she, right. <laughs> um, and then uh, there's a couple of blurry photos, but I mean, even in this blurry photo, you're looking, you, you see on top of this filing cabinet, there is what appears to be, um, like those old VHS storage yeah. cabinets, yeah, so like that's what it looks like. VHS up there, and on the bottom there are these big, huge moving boxes that are full of just God knows what's in there. Man, it's just unreal. You've no idea what's in here. Here's one thing that I did notice about this room. Okay, well, there's one thing that I noticed about this room, and that is there are no vents. There are no vents. <laughs> Wow. There are no vents. There are no vents in the ceiling. There are no vents in the wall. There is, there, there's no, there's nothing. It's just, it's yeah. crazy to me. It's just, it's insane. And the lights need to be fixed. <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch of, a bunch of fluorescent lights around. And I'm lights sure fluorescent out. lights was probably a bad idea too. I know. Uh, and so you have all these boxes that are on the ground that have VHS tape after VHS tape after VHS tape, not to mention um, Sheila, mentioned sheila e mentioned that was at the celebration a, a few years back i want to say 2019 or 2018 sheila was at the celebration and she said that she still has a couple boxes full of cassette tapes of jam sessions that her and prince had done stuff that you know were just you know may have been you know glamorous life you know our versions of glamorous life but there may have been like tons of other stuff as well just jam sessions that they just kind of came up with. And it's just, it's crazy. There's so much stuff that's in there. Man. I mean, I'm looking at all these VHS tapes and, you know, I mean, Prince fans, you're having a heart attack looking at this going, God, it's, I just, <laughs> it's, it's, I just makes no sense. It's so it much gold. No sense. It's just unreal. Uh, there's also a couple, there's a computer back there, which you know may or may not contain lyrics uh, in front of one of these pictures of computers for those who are looking at audio. There's also a picture of a George Clinton album, um, which we came to find out uh, when I was doing some of the research for the show that that is actually the old cover for George's album. Hey man, smell my finger. That one, uh, mm. those, so that that's a CD that that is, but it was a burn CD. And I think, um, Look, look at that computer. That computer has a three and a half inch floppy drive. It has a, yes. It has a floppy drive on it. That's amazing. That's crazy. so old. That may even be a five and a half inch one. It's, That's it, a five it, and a half. Five, five and a quarter. Five twenty five. Five and a quarter. That's just crazy to me. I still have some. <laughs> uh, this is a picture I, I think I actually have behind me, but there's some stuff that's sitting on the floor. I mean, just all this stuff that's just sitting. It's like a, like a library. It's literally like a library. It's just, it, it's just nothing of just, it's Dewey Decimal System. It's not. It's not even that. I mean, I'm looking at some of these numbers, and they don't even make sense. Well, I mean, some would be like right there at the bottom. You can see sixteen one, sixteen two, sixteen three, sixteen four. But then it goes haywire. I mean, there are. It seemed like there was some type of. 
my guess is that the numerical system that was in place here, the numerical system that was in place here must have been Susan Rogers doing. And then once right. Susan left, I think that's probably when it went haywire because Susan was like, I got to have a system for this. Susan is one of those types of people who's very, you know, she's this very type A or whatever it is that that has mm -hmm. to have that organization. It has to be like, da, 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 da. it's just, it's crazy. It's just, you know. All right. And, and you always need somebody like that in your life. That's <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, you definitely do. And so, and then you also have inside of these cabinets, as you can see, there's like tons of cassette tapes and CDRs and, and all kinds wow. of, all kinds of ridiculousness that's just all buried in there. Just literally wall after wall of just, you know, what I'm looking for and I don't see is an eight track. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh, some people are like, what is an eight track? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just it's crazy. It's just uh, so we don't want to show that picture yet. No. Uh, yeah. So, man. Um, wow. It's just so much stuff. There is so much stuff in there. So, you know, one of the things we definitely wanted to talk about tonight, and we wanted to kind of look a little bit into, you know, let's look at some of the songs that you know have are are, are still sitting in there that we know are still sitting in there. Mm -hmm. uh, then on top of that, you know just talk about some of the, some of the things that I've, I found interesting right out of the gate uh, of the stuff that was interesting that I saw in the photos, because I pulled that stuff into Photoshop and I, I looked at a lot of different things, the same, same thing that other guy did. Um, but I also went through that spreadsheet and kind of um, notated some things as well. There was a CD that was called, or a reel that was called jam of the century. And it was in a Konica box, so maybe it might actually be some concert footage. Right. Maybe it might have been just like a really, really amazing Jam of the Year concert. So that could possibly, possibly be. Um, before Prince's death, there was a documentarian from the BBC that was doing some special on trying to identify what was in Prince's vault and just trying to get inside of Prince's vault to see. And that just wasn't happening when he was with us. It's just like. It's not happening, dude. It's just, it's, it's not happening. Forget about but, it. But they interviewed Kat, and she um, referenced a song that she said was one of her all-time favorites called Cornbread Rappers. And I'd never heard of that song, but of course, uh, when I looked it up on Prince Vault, of course, it's her rapping, so it would be a song that, that she was on, obviously. Um, so you, you tend to kind of gravitate towards stuff that you perform on, for sure. Absolutely. Um, there was another song called Carousel uh, from November 27th, 1985. And I tried to look up that date, but this was when Under the Cherry Moon had kind of just finished up recording. And at this point, they're you know kind of going about France. And uh, mm -hmm. it could be a reference to that carousel that's by the Eiffel Tower. Um, right. But again, surprisingly, there's nothing to indicate what this even is as photos of the band is it music inspired by the carousel music inspired by a carousel or is it referring to carousel du Louvre, or du Louvre, i think it's how it's pronounced which is an underground shopping mall in paris i mean he's done she's done songs about shopping malls with calhoun square it's a song about a, a mall uh it could be literally anything else um Delivery Boy, that was another song that was on there. Many folks don't know about this song, but that was a track that was supposed to be on the Controversy album. A lot of people don't know about this song, but there's a song called Delivery Boy. Um, and, of course, Controversy is one of my all-time favorite albums. And yes. I, if this is anywhere in the vein of those songs, I, I really want to hear this track. But according to, I can't remember who it was, uh, I remember reading something. A delivery boy kept ending up on controversy and then being taken off on controversy. They would come on controversy and left off a of controversy. Wow. And it seems like even if you go under Prince Vault, they don't really make too much reference to delivery boy. But you know, Prince Vault has a lot of holes in it as well. But um, I mean, it's, it's pretty comprehensive. But on the same on the same note, there's still a lot of things that you just you know you find out later and you yeah, know, somebody's going to be paying somebody to update it like Wikipedia. Uh, it's just not. You know, it's just not what it is. But I really want to hear Delivery Boy. I mean, it, it, if that is a controversy era track, I want to hear this song. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Me too. Me too. Without I mean, a doubt. I think a lot of people have heard 
uh, the Rebels. The Rebels was an entire album that was kind of like a rock project that he had put together. And we actually do have a couple of those tracks that are on that we play on Purple Yoda Radio. This is a rock project, very raw, very just very raw and gritty. I mean, it was Prince, Des Dickerson, Andre Simone, Bobby Z, and Dr. Fink, and it featured Gail Chapman on vocals. It was very, um, it was very Mother's Finest. I would. I, I would not be surprised to say that probably Prince was trying to recapsulate what Mother's Finest was doing, even though I never heard him mention Mother's Finest. I mean, I don't, I obviously didn't hang out with him or anything, but I don't remember him, remember him ever referencing Mother's Finest until later on in the 2000s when they started covering some of the stuff on the, uh, the London tour. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if that's what they were trying to do because it's, it's very Mother's Finest sounding but more raw and gritty and unpolished um you know mother's finest had a very very polished sound and and this just wasn't that um but none of that music that was released by the rebels there's a couple songs that made it out from that project um there's a song called you y-o-u before he just did the letter u it was y-o-u that he gave to paula abdul if you've ever heard paula abdul's album spellbound there's a song called you that's on it that was Prince's song that he wrote for the rebels. And of course, then there's also the song, if I love you tonight, which was on Nika Paris's album contribution. And then again, Maite recorded it on her child of the sun album. So, um, you know, what, what's interesting too, and I actually have this book over here. There's a couple tapes that are marked in here for, uh, June 14th, 1984 and August 30th, 1984. And those are interesting dates because normally every single time or every single date has something with it. Right. It, uh, there's always something with it. Something significant. And if it's not on Prince Vault, you can find it on this in this book here, this Per Nielsen book, uh, Prince the Documentary, um, which is a great friggin' book. Um, this was a, this is a fantastic book, by the way. Hmm. Um and I just bought another copy of this. I actually won another copy of this on eBay that I will be doing an auction for, um, for, uh, for charity for Gilbert Davison's uh, charity that we're going to the love for one another. We're going to be working with them and we're going to be, I'm putting together a really, really cool auction package that you guys can, can go to win. This book is, I don't think anybody's selling it for less than like 60, 70 bucks, but Anyways, if it's not indicated in this book, Per Nielsen's Prince of Documentary, it, it's, it's really strange and unusual that it's not. Mm. There's something that's not in there. But anyways, say June 14th, 1984 and August 30th, 1984, no concert or anything indicated in, in anywhere that anything happened on those. So it could have just been a jam session that happened inside of the studio. Who knows? Um, but... Um, is what it is. Um, right. Speaking of controversy, there's another one called Dear Uncle George. And even though, and a lot of people aren't familiar with this song, but Dear Uncle George had its lyrics changed. The music stayed the same, but the lyrics changed. And Dear Uncle George became what you guys all know as a song called Private Joy. So the song Private Joy used to be called Dear Uncle George. It's, the music is exactly the same, but the lyrics are different. I would still love to hear Private Joy with lyrics <laughs> for Dear Uncle George. I would like to hear I, Dear Uncle George. I, I don't, considering that that album is full of perversion and incest, I, I really would like to know what Dear Uncle George, yeah. what, <laughs> what type of debaucherous lyrics are behind Dear Uncle George. Uh, there's got to be something. It's just like totally proceed, off the wall. It's, proceed it's like, with caution when yeah. you want to listen to that. <laughs> Dear Uncle George, oh, gosh. why'd you touch me there, dear Uncle George? Who knows what it is? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, Who knows what it is? It don't tickle be- me. <laughs> <laughs> don't touch me there, dear Uncle George. Who knows? No. It's- <laughs> Anyways. We, Uncle it, George performed a magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> these are these are all things that are inside of the vault. 
every single bit of this is inside the vault and maybe maybe at some point in time it's going to end up coming out that's just you know it is what it is um there's another song called that's hilarious there's another song called that that's a clip to save for later for sure <laughs> sorry there's another track called fun love <laughs> okay breathe <laughs> <laughs> recorded in March of 1986, uh, along with another song called Tuesday, T W O S Day, mm. um, with that had some orchestral arrangements that were done by Claire Fisher. So there's a couple, uh, there's a bunch of Claire Fisher stuff that is out there. Um, I had a note, I had a notation somewhere in here. Oh my god, I'm crying. I still <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, holding it in, but I'm still, I'm yeah, still. I'm sorry, that was that was just my fault. Um, oh man, that was my bad. I had to go there. Uh, anyways, uh, I have no idea what Fun Love or Tuesday is, but again, it recorded in March 1986. You're talking about you know a parade era there or whatever's mm -hmm. going on, but there's a bunch of stuff with Claire Fisher. Um, and I think I had some more information from Brent Fisher later on. I did. Uh, there's a BBC interview with Brent Fisher, um, who, if you've been a fan of Funkatopia for a long time, years ago, uh, I had Brent Fisher on the show and he said that out of, out of every 25 songs that Brent and his father, Claire contributed to Prince, mm -hmm. only one was released. So wow. keep in mind, these are orchestral arrangements for songs of princes. So right there you have at least a couple dozen different songs of, uh, of theirs that, and, and that's only, <laughs> and he wasn't just saying just 25. He was saying for every 25 songs that we would send to him, one would see the light of day. Right. I'm thinking fun. Love is probably new position. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a rewrite. Uh, yeah. The original version. <laughs> you, you, you're wanting me to sing this one out to you. Huh? I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna do that one. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> Lawrence is Lawrence is adding on. <laughs> I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna say it out loud. I am. Loop me, up, Uncle. Let's take a trip. <laughs> Loop me up, Uncle. Let's take a trip. Uh, Anyways, oh, so poor Lawrence. Yeah, there is uh here's another well, I will share an image again to the chagrin of the folks that are listening on audio only. Here is a photo of a cassette tape that Lenny Kravitz showed on his Instagram account hmm. that showcases um um it's just Lenny Kravitz and Prince have full recordings of them together doing jam sessions. Um and this is this is just one tape of many, apparently. And uh, this is a picture of one of the tapes that he posted on his Instagram a while back. And um, in my opinion, this is the kind of stuff that that needs to be released. I mean, right. you know, when you have Lenny Kravitz and Prince in the studio together doing jam sessions that are, um, I mean, just it's just out of control. Um, I, this For those who are don't have video up, the it's a it's a regular black cassette tape a 90 minute cassette tape and it says lenny kravitz and it's got uh the love symbol uh and it's just it's it's a, a tape that's just full of jams i can't even uh, uh you yeah can't. you can imagine the jam session going on there uh yeah it's just unreal i mean it was a hardcore i mean lenny's first album let love rule i, I that album yeah. was just friggin' magic. And I was so glad that I actually yeah. got to see that tour at um, the Cotton Club in downtown Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I think Rob was with me. Rob Rhythm was with me. And we were at the Cotton Club and we saw Lenny Kravitz. And it was, Cotton Club is not a big club. There was maybe, maybe 150 people there. I, I don't know. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't a couple hundred. It was, it was very, it was, it was just barely anybody there. And, because nobody knew who he was. It was just his first album. And so he came out and uh, did his jam sessions with his, you know, with his bell bottoms and he played the whole entire album. And uh, I, I, 
I've told a story before. There was a guy standing next to me, maybe it was his manager or whatever, but I remember him leaning over to me and saying, he is never, ever going to play in a place this small again. And I said, I, um, I bet you're right. And he was right. right. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> he was right. Um, but I'm glad that I was there to, to see it. But yeah, so it's Lenny, Kravitz, and Prince playing together. And there's multiple jam sessions that we know of. Some are in the vault and some are in possessions of – and that's the other thing too is it's not just the vault itself – Lenny Kravitz has, you know, has these jam sessions on tape that probably right. Prince doesn't even have copies of. Maybe exactly. they just recorded it on a, like a, on a boom box or this kind of stuck it into the, the tape player on the board and just played it um, because Sheila said the same thing. And Eric Leeds has said the same thing. All of them say they have boxes of these cassette tapes that Prince used to send them. Um, and so you got all these things that exist. It's literally, it's just, I mean, and there's songs like uh, Soul Sister. There's another song called Soul Sister. Mm-hmm. Nothing on this song anywhere. I've never even heard this song. Um, it's just, it's it's nuts. Oh, um, there's some others that obviously had no names that are, apparently were just basic ideas that um, on some of the containers, there's one called Tune Number 3, Groove, Drums mm-hmm. and Bass, um, it says drums and bass, and then it says sounds good. So I guess it was drums and bass, and it sounded good. And that's we didn't even know what to name it, so it was just like eh, whatever. Right? Maybe um, I'll use it someday. Right. And uh, and then he had another one that said songs with lots of other songs. <laughs> <laughs> and there was another one called Paisley Groove and Unidentified Groove. So there was a lot of those types of tapes that were kind of floating around in the mix that you, you didn't know what it was. It's you right. you had no idea what's what's even on them. I've got another image for you uh, for a group called Lois Lane. Um, And actually, I think Lois Lane is um, still together to this day, if I remember correctly. I think they still they're still a band. Um, They are still a legit band. Uh, They're a Dutch girl group uh, started out in 1992. They had already had two albums underneath their um, uh, underneath their belt. And then they mm-hmm. somehow managed to get an opening slot for Prince on his nude tour. <laughs> um, and then during that, during that period, they asked Prince to contribute some songs to their new album that he was, that they were putting together. And uh, he said, sure, let's do it. And uh, wow. that album, that third album was called precious and it contained five song contributions from Prince. Uh, one of them was called I O I I O H I uh crying and then there was some um like qualified i want to be and sex and of course most people remember sex from the scandal of sex suite mm-hmm. um and it was i tried to find lois lane's version of sex because uh, but it was very difficult because searching for lois lane sex uh pulls up a lot of other things <laughs> yeah <I> bet. <laughs> instead of instead of that it doesn't pull up that it pulls no, up. it pulls up Uncle George stuff. That's, <laughs> that's it pulls up something did. totally different. Uh, matter of fact, if you're looking at the album cover, uh, do we know if Andre is in the house? Yeah, Andre's uh, in the house. Yeah, he was. And, Andre, Andre, this one's for you, um, because there was another version of this album cover, um, same exact album cover, except they were not clothed, and uh, it's this one here. So a little bit different um, for those who are on audio. I hate it for you. You, it's really, you really should be doing video right now. Uh, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's basically two uh, brunette women that are uh, half naked, very, very close, and just anyway. so that is the out al- the another album cover that it's art. It, it it's art. It's an now alt- what we need to we need to find out was this photoshopped was this airbrushed were they actually dressed <laughs> <laughs> they were wearing turquoise sweaters they went, turtlenecks <laughs> they were in turtlenecks and it was and they were it was airbrushed out um yeah so uh anyways yeah so that was an alternate version of that album cover and my guess is that that's probably the one that prince wanted them to use when they were on the um, um the nude tour the nude tour that makes sense uh, yeah uh, let's see. Another song called Susan. 
which is an unreleased track from 1981 that was most likely written about Susan Moonsey because it was from 1981 and he was dating her around that time um, when she was part of Vanji Six and she was also part of um, uh, Apollonia Six as well. So lots of different stuff there. Um, and there was another uh, article and I had seen this uh, before about some other little elements that were in there, not just talking about individual songs, but wanted to talk about some of the other videos and stuff that were actually in there. Here are some interesting things that were in the vault that were confirmed to be in the vault, but that we really had to confirm before we said it again. Right. <laughs> right. Like, you say it and it's like, uh, yeah. I don't know if this is a real thing, uh, but, there is a documentary film that was in the vault called the second coming. And it was a documentary film and a live album from 1982. And obviously it's referring, uh, that would be the, the dirty mind tour, I guess, because it would be, I guess that would be the dirty mind tour when the second coming was that the opening song that they did. Uh, for that but anyways it's a documentary film and live album from 1982 believe it or not there's also an apollonia 6 film that's in there uh, it's a cinematic attempt to do for apollonia 6 what purple rain did for prince which obviously did not make it out uh for whatever yeah. reason <laughs> uh there's another co a collection of drum solos by sheila e called sexy drummer funker that is in there um, that's kind of interesting uh, to see that in there. Obviously, we were already aware of Camille and Dream Factory and, and Crystal Ball, all those different things that were out there in Madhouse 24. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of weird things uh, that were in there. There was a, a house album, like a techno house album that uh, was done for Apollonia that was also in there. Uh, there's a album from the time called Corporate World, which I actually have all the songs for. So most of those songs ended up on um, most of those songs. Actually, you know what? There's another album that I've heard about from the time. And I asked, I think I asked Jelly Bean about this uh, years ago when I was talking to him. There was another time album called um, Old Dog New Tricks, I want to say. Hmm. I want to say the album is called Old Dog New Tricks or something along those lines. And he said, yeah, I remember that. And it's like, okay, well, and that was it. It was like, it is. I remember that. I don't know what happened to it, uh, but it has huh. not been seen inside of the vault, but um, it's been confirmed that it does exist. Um, but the times album corporate world was actually supposed to happen. And then for whatever reason, you know, Prince and Morris day seem to kind of always be uh, at odds with one another from you know one minute to the next. You never knew, you know, how their relationship was going. And uh, right. what ended up happening with most of corporate world is that it either ended up on the graffiti bridge soundtrack or like most of the stuff that you hear, like release it and things like that, that were on the graffiti bridge soundtrack were was supposed to be on corporate world. And then some of the other tracks like chocolate and whatnot ended up on uh, their pandemonium album, their Pandemonium. but there's still some songs that are out there from corporate world that you uh, most folks have not heard. Um, and, but we play corporate world on purple Yoda radio. I, I saw somebody ask how you get purple Yoda radio. All you got to do is just go to purple Yoda radio.com and you can listen there, or you can download the funked up app. That's F U N K E D U P funked up. You can download the funked up app and you can listen to two radio stations. There's purple Yoda radio that plays 24 seven prints. And there's also another radio station that plays 24 seven funk. It also plays prints as well. I think every fifth song is a print song, but it also has, you know, Earth, Wind and Fire and Ohio Players and Parliament Funkadelic and all that stuff. So and it also has newer stuff, too. You know, it also has, you know, Lattice and Jamiroquai and things like that. Yeah, it's good so uh, it's yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's really, really good music. So, you know, if you're printed out, you can switch over. It's just and it's free. So download it. It's called the Funked Up app. You can get it uh, for both Android and iPhone. It's ASCAP licensed as well. So when uh, the songs actually match, <laughs> the artist gets paid. Gets paid. Um, yeah, it actually gets paid for the you know. So we're we're legit in that regard. But um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. You know, there's a lot of different things out there as well when you think about like um, there's a Shaka Khan project that's in there that was never been released. Um, there's a Sheila E album in there from 1989 that has never been released. Mm-hmm. There's a, I've talked about this before. There's a Sheena Easton album that was never released because a lot of people just remember her from Private Life. And we talked about this before how she went from like the clean, boppy, my thing right. that takes the morning train. And the next the thing you know, it's like, my <laughs> <laughs> okay um um okay so yeah and everybody was like oh my gosh you know uh <laughs> that wasn't sugar walls at all was it what was i singing i mean it's good enough <laughs> yeah that's not what i was what was i singing i it was i was singing the melody to something else anyways it doesn't matter it was dirty and it was dirty uh, it was dirty it was very uncle george it was, and, so, uh, it was so uncle george it was so uncle george uh, but the album was kind of more along the lines of Sugar Walls. Um, and so it was an entire album that was more like Sugar Walls. And the problem was, is that she decided, eh, I don't think this is going to be what I need to do. I need right. to, um, um, I, I, I need to go back to what I was doing before, probably because it's, it's you know, maybe it was more monetary you know, beneficial, or maybe she was just afraid that her kids would hear it. I don't know. What it she could be thinking. both. Yeah. Um, and yeah. It's a, it was a big change from what she was doing. I mean, it was like, that's a whole different person, you know? So yeah, that's just, maybe she wasn't ready for it. And, and it's actually, it's okay. You know, she's, she's got to stay true to herself and she did. Yeah. Well, um, I suppose. Yeah. There's also a, a, an EP with Kim Basinger and Ween and also Ozzy Osbourne in there. Strangely enough. Wow. Yeah, I don't know what's actually all involved with that, but um, that was some weird stuff that we had heard that I actually had to verify. Um, he also had an entire project that he worked on with Tim Burton. Uh, I guess this was kind of on the flip side of Batman. I, I, I imagine it's after Batman was done. Um, but I do remember lots of different stories with Tim Burton not really being happy that Prince was involved with Batman to the extent that he was. He wanted more of a soundtrack because him and Danny Elfman were like really, really close. And obviously when you see a Tim Burton movie, there's going to be Danny Elfman soundtrack. It's just that he's going to be involved in the soundtrack some way in some form. Right. Um, and I think that Warner brothers was trying to double dip because the movie was Warner brothers. And also, um, you know, Prince was a Warner brothers artist. And so Warner brothers was like, yeah, this is going to work out great for us. Everybody just get bigger wallets, please. <laughs> um, and, uh, but he wasn't really, really happy that he was, he kind of felt like he was being a little bit strong armed by Warner brothers to kind of use Prince for the soundtrack. But the reality of it is, is that it ended up being very, very successful for Prince. And, uh, I don't know ultimately in the end how Tim Burton ended up feeling about it, but I, you know, I think it used a good mixture of Danny stuff and, and Prince's stuff throughout the movie. I think Prince's, there's only like three songs of Prince's in the movie, right? This party man, right. Um, and then, um, trust, and I, I can't remember this, like only about this only, and maybe it's only like about, I don't know. I think it's about four songs used throughout the whole movie and it's just pieces, but anyways, him and Danny Elfman in 1993, I guess it was, uh, did some project called Teal T E A L. Um, and they actually had, he actually was putting together some type of album for it. There was a a 19 minute extended music video that was directed by Tim Burton called Teal Snow. Uh, There was a bunch of outfits that were kind of put together called Teal Angels that were supposed to be for a, uh, a stage show that they were going to be doing. Uh, He also had these massive eight foot um, neon letters that spelled out Teal. Um, I guess that were going to be used in some type of Vegas thing or whatever, but yeah, it's a whole it was going to be a whole thing called teal. I don't know what it was or what it was about. Um, but you know, it is what it was. And of course there's other stuff that we already knew, um, like the undertaker and things like that. Um, uh, apparently in one of those boxes, there are two boxes of correspondence between Prince and Shanae O'Connor. Um, and some of it's nasty. Some of it's, I guess he decided to keep everything. So I don't, I don't even know. Um, the vault, which we know as old friends for sale actually has multiple volumes to it. Um, there was 
chaos and disorder actually was supposed to be the vault. Uh, the vault actually ended up the chaos and disorder actually was pulled from the trio collection of the work that he did with uh, Sonny T and uh, Michael Bland. And that was a trio that they had done uh, called that's the chaos and disorder album that we know, but it was originally called the vault volumes one. The second one was actually the one that you guys heard uh, that everybody, well, everybody's heard chaos and disorder too, but uh, the vault old friends for sale. But then there's another, another one. That's a third one, which uh, I don't know what's on them. I mean, I nobody knows what's on them. It's just, it's just there. Um, there's also four hours of spoken word poetry by Ingrid Chavez. That's kind of set to set to some kind of uh, what they call beat neck jams or whatever. Um, speaking of uh, his past loves and whatnot, going back to the script. Uh, there's also tapes of Prince. Um, <laughs> tonight we video. No one will ever know. Uh, there's basically uh, some sex tapes that do exist in some form or fashion. We don't know if they're in the vault, but apparently they do exist. Whether or not they've been. Um, hidden or people are going to die with them in the graves. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea where they exist. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I, they, I, I, I'm positive. There's a market for them. There's, there's no, there's no doubt about that. There's, there, there's absolutely a market for them. Uh, hopefully uh, they erase the naughty bits. Yeah. Hopefully that's I, all I'm saying. <laughs> I highly doubt it. I <laughs> highly doubt it. Uh, yeah, Krista says no sex tapes with Uncle George. I hope. Oh uh, boy! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I imagine not. Um, but yeah, so there's like a bunch of different things. Uh, more, there's a bunch of Morris Day stuff in there too. Obviously, you know, Morris and him work together a lot. There's a lot of recordings of him and Morris Day just kind of doing just various jam, jam sessions. Uh, there's a, a tape of Morris Day and uh, uh, Jason Muse doing a rap track that was supposed to be on that Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back soundtrack that the time performed in but there was like a bunch of different clips and stuff that were not that were not used or whatever uh there were also uh, um there was another one that i remember them saying that morris did some type of narrative or something over uh, it was a story i can't remember what it was hmm. uh, but it was like some type of narrative it was like a documentary of, of someone like um can't remember who it was about. I'll I'll huh. try to remember. Um, but basically, he was doing just like a story. Oh, Coco Beware! That was a documentary film on Coco Beware, and uh, it was a documentary on on. Um, and so I don't know. Uh, yeah, so lots of different things. There's not one, not two, not three, but four different albums that were put together with him him being Prince and uh, Dave Perner from soul asylum. I've talked about this before that there are um, multiple albums of him and Prince just, they kind of just doing jam sessions. And of course we also know that everything that was ever played from Paisley park, it was recorded. So we are well aware that there are also the jam sessions recorded with Prince and Dave Grohl. Um, yeah, for sure. However long that, that jam session went on. So there's also those, there's also the jam sessions between him and uh, when Miles Davis was there mm -hmm. um, that were never released. And I don't, I think based on, based on what Eric Leeds told us when we interviewed him, I remember him saying some of the effect that they sent that song to Eric, to uh, Miles Davis. To That's right. Yeah, to, to do something on it. And then Miles, you know, recorded his bleeps and blaps on it. And when they got it back, they were like, they excitedly went into the studio and stuck it in and they and they just were listening to it. They were like, uh, no, okay. Not so much. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, uh, maybe we expected a little bit more. I don't know what we expected, but, um, you know, uh, it's not that. 
Uh, so my guess is that probably the work with this is, you know, Miles was on, you know, kind of on a little bit of a downturn at that point. He really wasn't doing anything, you know, spectacular. The New Year's Eve show was was kind of evident of that. You know, a lot of people were excited that, you know, Miles Davis came on the stage. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there is an entire Miles Davis album where he actually plays Prince tunes. And um, it's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty good but it wasn't it have anything to do with prince other than he was playing over prince's materials and i actually have that um mm. i'm gonna have to get it out to those patreon supporters for sure oh yeah because um, it's it's pretty awesome um of course we know about roadhouse roadhouse garden um and you know some various albums martika's kitchen we know about because it was essentially the rough draft of the the album uh that um he did you know, for Martika's Kitchen, and then a mm. um, bunch of Maite stuff um, that was out there. Maite had there's an album from Maite called Scorpio. There's another album called um, there's another album that her and Prince worked on called Happy Tears that was supposed to be done as a children's album for their son, but then after her after their son passed, they did they right. just they shelved it. It's kind of it, and I think that will I, I doubt that will ever 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 get released that will be it's gone for sure that would just yeah, be for sure. sure yep and there are multiple crystal ball albums not just crystal ball that you guys know which is already a three cd set but there's also um a crystal ball two which is outtakes from crystal ball um crystal ball three and crystal ball four all of which are relatively you know this massive you know outtakes that um mm -hmm. are just you know just there it's kind of just surprised uh everybody for those who are hardcore prince fans as far as the documentarian side of things kevin smith um who many of you you know know from you know jay and silo bob um and clerks and everything else that he's done prince because he's from minnesota prince brought him in to kind of shoot a documentary and i guess kevin did quite a extensive documentary for a little while never edited down to anything that was actually you know he was trying to get some stories and whatnot but uh, it never came to fruition but um those th those tapes and stuff are still in the vault they've never been released that footage has never been released who knows what's even on the <laughs> who knows what's in there it's just yeah that's just it's just crazy um and of course we also know about chocolate invasion um uh there was also some random albums that were in there david bowie's toy album was in there mm -hmm. um and um gosh there was a film for 3121 that was in there it's kind of like in the style of purple rain uh but it was a project by liza hernandez and it was a film project it was called 3121 and it was going to be kind of in a, in a vein of purple rain but it was around 3121 uh he also did a Tribute album to Heath Ledger. You must have really liked Heath Ledger because he did a tribute album called Joker. Uh, may have just been just a song or two, like an EP type of thing, but it was just like a little bit of a tribute. I guess he really mm -hmm. kind of felt you know, affected by you know, loss or whatever. Uh, Tamar's album Milk and Honey, which was shelved, but was eventually released. It just got released a, a few years ago. And... Um, you know, she's been on the show a couple of times and we were talking about it because I right. knew about I knew about that album long before I, I knew that about that album a long time ago. Right. Um, and she swore me to secrecy. She was like, there's a whole album and that's it's, it's all his stuff. And he's, you know, um, I was like, oh, that's really, really cool. When's it coming out? Said, you can't talk about it at all. I was like, OK, I won't talk about it at all. And um, and then she told me the last she told me before we were leaving is like before before he passed, he sent me a letter basically Permission. signing yeah. over all of the rights to that album over to her. So it was, was like, an awesome wow, move. Wow, that's when does he do that? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't do that at all. You know, right. we, I mean, that's just that's just ridiculous. So it just happened to be, you know, it just happened to be. So you have all those different types of things, but you know, you think about all the songs that are out there that um, have never been released. Um, uh, mm. Here's some. I'll just go through, quickly go through a list of some of the things that I know were uh, that are out there 
and confirmed again, just like everything I read out to you has been confirmed. These are other things that have been confirmed for artists that um, you may or may not have heard. Uh, there is a, let's see. He created a song called second thoughts for Dale Bazio, who many of you know from missing persons. Um, there is three nigs watching a Kung Fu movie, which is supposed to be on that <laughs> Sheila E album from 1989. That just didn't, uh, that just didn't come to fruition. Um, obviously the Madhouse 24 album that was there. Um, let's see. Amber eyes, which was a song that was supposed to be on for you. Another song called am I without you? That was supposed to be on Raven to the joy. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of different, different songs that we know are in the vault. Matter of fact, I'm going to put this list out here. Yeah. Um, because I want list. you guys to look at this unreleased songs list on Prince vault. So you guys can kind of go through here and kind of, uh, but if you go to uh, princevault.com, um, and sometimes you can't go to princevault.com. So, I mean, sometimes it's, it rarely does some kind of wacky thing, but if you go to princevault.com and you, um, there's a section for unreleased songs and you can actually go there and it will show you all the songs that were intended for other artists that just for, for whatever reason, just kind of disappeared. I mean, he said songs uh, on there for uh, Ingrid Chavez. And that of course, you know, Tamar's that we mentioned, there's an album that was done for cat. They, he had um, a, a theme for Coca-Cola where the Coca-Cola company, he actually worked on Coca-Cola, which I find very, very interesting because a lot of people don't know this, but the Pepsi jingle, you got the right one, baby. Uh-huh. Mm. That was Ray Charles that did it in the commercial, but a lot of people don't know this. Prince wrote Prince. that. Right. That's <laughs> his song. And uh, that's right. A lot, of, a lot of people aren't aware of that, but that's 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 Prince's track. So Prince wrote that and Ray Charles performed it for the Pepsi commercial. So I find it interesting that there is a Coca-Cola theme in there as well. He was just like, I tell you what, I'm going to write a Coca-Cola song and a Pepsi song. And let's see whose wallet is deeper. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Obviously, Coke's wallet is way deeper than Pepsi's, but uh, they must have done something. Um, I don't know what it who knows what they may have done? Who knows? Um, well, uh, whatever they did, it was the right one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was looking at some of these other uh, songs uh, on here. Diamond Eyes from, uh, which Double is a song. To, yeah, from the, yeah, it's just so many different things. Oh, know, man. Man. Larry Graham stuff that's in here. Um, yeah, some of the stuff that we had had that we had had on the list that we were actually talking about. Uh, Let's rock. A lot of people don't know this, but the song "Let's Work" used to be t called "Let's Rock," and it was uh, if it was just Prince and Andre Simone uh, on bass, and it used to be called "Let's Rock," and it, it became "Let's Let's uh, Work." Um, there was another one in there called "Dad." No reference to the song anywhere. It could very well be a recording of Prince and his father playing together. I, I, I just. If it's mm -hmm. if that's the case, I imagine that the estate and his family would be very interested in that recording for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that's on that list is the Munsters, and also there is Flintstones also. So there's two uh, TV shows, Munsters and Flintstones. And this is maybe a yet another surprise, but believe it or not, Prince and the band worked on both the Flintstones theme and the Munsters theme, not the ones that we know on TV, but they took those songs and they incorporated it into the shows that they did during those Vegas residencies during 3121. So most likely those reels are them practicing those excerpts right. to figure out how, you know, how do you, how do you incorporate this into there? Um, you just you just don't know. I mean, it's just who knows. Um, there's that song uh, "Hump You," that was written about the same time as Susan, so that could have been anything. Um, there's one that was interesting. I called Vanity Jam Star S T A R R Studios. Vanity Jam. I imagine it was maybe a jam session with. Um, hmm. I mean, Vanity's band was the time, <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> right. 
<laughs> so I, I don't know. Um, so maybe it's some type of jam session with the time oh. during the vanity era and vanity singing. I, and it was done. I don't know, but there's some very, um, so only a few more things that I, I felt worth, worth notating in here. Uh, a tape that said 12, 15, 1985, which is obviously December 15th, 1985. Um, massive mystery. Uh, don't know anything about that date other than we do know that he was working on the parade album at the time, but nothing really specific about what happened on that day. Other than the very next day on December 16th, he was working on another lover hole in your head. So, uh, on that song in particular, when you look go on Prince Vault and you look at those picks, you know, or per Nielsen's book, you look at, you know, and that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. So it could have just been various jam sessions as he was kind of putting parade together and kind of culminating some of this stuff. I, I don't know. Right. Uh, another, another song called apartment. Nothing anywhere about this song. It's not in the per Nielsen book. It's not on Prince Vault. It was just a, two inch reel that said apartment on it. Don't know what that is. Um, that's, you know, so there's things out there that we don't even, we don't even know what it is. And of course, and, and there's another one that was, who knows what it was, was called check it out. Number three. And it was mm. credited to Prince and the NPG. So could have just been a note to himself. Hey, this is a jam session that we did and probably right. check it out. Reminder to go back to yeah. it or something. Maybe check it out. Might be pretty cool. Might be something worth checking out. I don't know. Um, but I tell you, there. I mean, some of the things that I think is is really interesting about some of the stuff that's in there. Again, eight thousand. I mean, I it's mean, just so much. It's they're just <laughs> guesstimating eight thousand songs in this friggin' vault. It, it, even when you're thinking about remixes and stuff, it's just it's just mind-boggling it is um and not even including because you know a lot of that doesn't even record i mean the hard drives i was gonna say especially the hard drives because we don't know what size those hard drives are you don't know how much data is on there i mean it just doesn't make any sense it, it just <laughs> I, I don't even know uh ben says uh, ben Pedrick, who is actually the purveyor of Mrs. Wellington's Warehouse, which I told you about before, the auction house that's uh, you can find on Facebook, mm. Mrs. Wellington's Warehouse. Actually, this NPG Music Club shirt I actually got from Mrs. Wellington's Warehouse. Um, and uh, a couple other shirts as well. But uh, it's a really, really cool auction house. But he says, Vanity Jam was most likely the intro jam that the time played at the beginning of Vanity Six's set every night on the Triple Threat Tour. It could well have been. You could mm. be right. Very possible. Um, I mean, guess is as good as uh, right as mine. Yeah, and it uh, makes sense. Yeah, uh, Stacy said Prince also did the Charlie Brown song during the Prince Piano and a Microphone tour. Yes, he did. He did the Linus and Linus and Lucy song. Da 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 da. Yeah, he played that in both do, 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 7 do, do, do. and the uh, and the 10 p.m. song. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, very, very cool. I mean, there's so much, so much great stuff that's in there. I'm, I'm, you know, so I'm kind of, you know, it kind of begs to, we could obviously sit and we could read through these friggin', I mean, just, just keep on reading through this stuff. He's got a, yes, the so Prince much. 1988 documentary. I mean, even if you go through that list, there's a song called Arabia. What is that about? You know, most likely right. that was probably the stuff that they did for the symbol album because that kind of had that feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so maybe it's something, um, you know, it's just so much different things that are out there that, uh, just so much, <laughs> so much stuff, dude. It's just, it's just crazy. I, I'm, I'm blown away. I mean, just, just looking through this list and going and going and going, it's just, <laughs> it's, yeah, it doesn't yeah. make any sense. I mean, there's, yeah. I mean, I know, um, and there's no, there's a couple other ones I just I just happened to notice. Good Judy Girlfriend, hmm. a, a song called "Good Judy Girlfriend," that was done in uh, uh, <laughs> Minneapolis. And then there's some other ones that you know, who knows what's on them. There's three M I, two M five, four M I, eight M two. Um, maybe that's times three minutes, one second, two. I don't know, but 
He's also got. It, see, this is the other thing too. You know, um, here's a piece of your mind. Yeah, I don't see that. Wait, P-E-A, where's that? It's on. It's on that spreadsheet for Paisley Park Vault. Piece of your yeah. mind. P E A C E of your mind. Line seven hundred five. Mm-hmm. And don't lose your dreams. Um. And then, of course, you got all these sound effects and North Carolina, which is probably you know a, a show. Um, live band tracks because if you think of all the um live shows that he did too i mean when you think of i mean just the live recordings are just chicken i don't think i've ever heard this song (laughs) i mean chicken there's a song yeah i mean this is this is just I don't even have words. It's just a mess. It's a lot of stuff. Sleezen. You heard Sleezen before? Sleezen. Uh, Streets of Panama. I've heard that before. Glass Cutter. It's been a long time, though. Um, Streets of Panama was like a, it was an instrumental. It was, um, I had that somewhere. I seem to remember I had that somewhere. Hold on a second. Um, Anyways, but you, you think about all the live recordings that are there, all the just random jam sessions that don't even that didn't even have a didn't even have a name, right? Um, it doesn't make any sense. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, it's just um, I know that there was a song called "Streets of Panama," um, but when you <laughs> pull it up on YouTube, uh, there's it's lots again. Of, uh, it's <laughs> one of these. It's you know, it's like the lowest lane sex uh, search. Uncle is, George you world. No, no, it's gonna have. Uh, oh, Peter. As Peter says, "Streets of Panama." Uh, was it supposed to be on thirty one twenty one? He said, "Streets of Panama dash thirty one twenty one." Was it supposed to be on thirty one twenty one? What's the story, Peter? Peter actually knows. Um, he is like a walking encyclopedia too. These are some folks that we just. Uh, yeah, I mean have somebody that just records at that level where you are you have so many different songs and so many different elements and and projects that are in there that are just it's just mind-boggling it's just it's too much stuff it's It's just it's it's um uh as i mentioned before we were uh hoping to get susan to come on the show um tonight to drop in to kind of talk a little bit about it and um Hopefully we're going to have her on a show here shortly. Um, but I really want to dig, you know, when we get her on the show, I definitely want to have a little bit of a talk on um, what, you know, what the vault looked like when, when she walked away. It seems like I remember mm-hmm. the interview that I saw with her was when she left in 1986, um, 1986 or 1987, when she walked away, she said there was at least a couple thousand songs in there already. Right. In 1986. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like decades later. And where are we at? You know, the dude right. still never stopped. And he, he still never stopped. Never stopped he never slowed He's, down. He, it's it's just, you know, and you know, it was like, oh, they he could release an album a year for the next hundred years. And I was like, yeah, that's just, that's not even the tip of the iceberg, dude exactly that's not even they could literally release an album a quarter for the next hundred years and still might be able to you know be scraping them you know i think they asked michael bland they said no it was sunny t they said um will we ever hear you know everything in the vault like, no yeah it's, no. It's, it's, not, it's not possible it's just not even possible even if you right. were given full access to the vault and someone just gave you the keys and said knock stuff out you would yeah, be in there for, for years or more, nonstop yeah, you'd be in there for for a decade, listening nonstop, right? And you know, I've said this before. It's like, and even if you somehow managed to make it all the way to the end, they would be whispering in your ear as you were <laughs> taking your last breath. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, there's also that whole jam session. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe next one. <laughs> Maybe we're at next life. Sorry, God. Oh, it sucks. Uh, and you can't take it, it with you. You heard a lot of it, though. We'll play it at oh, you, you did good. You did good. You did good. We'll play it at your funeral. 
<laughs> it's just, it's, it, and that's what I think the most disappointing thing uh, out of all of it, you know, um, is not being able to hear all this stuff. Obviously, he didn't want you to hear everything that was that was there, but um, right. And and the reality of it is that if he was still alive to this day, the amount of material that he would have done in this last six years or so, oh man, would, would still have outpaced the output of what a band does in their entire career. That's right. It, it's just not. You can't because he was actively working with a lot of different, you know, art. He was working with Kendrick Lamar and he was working with, you know, he was working with all these different artists, you know, just kind of getting close to artists that he really, really liked and uh, Alabama Shakes and, and, you know, all these people that he would just bring in and, you know, this, let's do a little bit of work with Janelle Monet and do a little bit of work with, you know, and, and he, it was just this constant thing that he would do. He couldn't stop himself. Um, right. He just, Oh, this person's really, really good. I want to have a jam session with them. And he was doing work with Dave Grohl. And he was just anybody that just appealed to him as a good, solid artist. He he wanted it's he wanted to participate with them in some form of capacity. It's, I this guy, I've got to work with you and somehow let's just do a jam session. Just come over and we'll just jam. We'll just we'll just do whatever. And um, but the thing about it is is that all these, you know, decades that he was alive, he did that every single day, 24 seven. There was, there probably was not a day in his life that he did not make music in some form or fashion. And if he did, it was probably driving him nuts the whole day. You probably was having songs driving him just nuts, like earworms, just he, that he couldn't control. It was just right. nonstop. He just couldn't handle it. There's no way. It's just, you know, some people are just like that. I mean, there's lots of artists that are like that where they just can't, they just can't shut it off and um and you don't want to shut it off right because of your creativity that's it fun. yeah it's yeah. just make it happen you know so but man well i appreciate you guys joining us for this amazing amazing um you know here's the other thing too and i told you about this as well you can tune in to purple yoda radio and you can hear like lots of really really cool deep cuts because not only do we play you know, some of the stuff that you are used to hearing on the albums, but we're also dug for those remixes, those things that he posted online temporarily, then he pulled them down. Um, we got lots of really st the stuff that you probably have not heard before. So definitely make sure that you download the Funked Up app. You can go to your the Android store, which is Google Play, or go to the Apple store and look for Funked Up, F-U-N-K-E-D-U-P, one word, Funked Up, or you can search for Funkatopia, Either way, you're going to find it. Download the Funked Up app and you can listen to it wherever you go. There's two radio stations on that app. There is the Purple Yoda Radio app, which is a 24-7 Prince radio app as uh, Prince music app, along with stuff like uh, Sheila E. and The Time and, and mm -hmm. Andy Allo and a bunch of other Prince-related artists. And then on top of that, we also have the the original, <laughs> the original Funked Up <laughs> radio uh, and Funked Up Radio is 24-7 Funk. So all the old school classics that you know and love, plus your your new heroes as well. You know, some of the, you know, your, your, your Lettuce and your Jamiroquai and your, um, and the uh, Michael Gabriels and, and all that stuff is is there, along with Prince as well. So there's two radio stations, a completely free app you can download. It's called Funked Up. I also want to make sure that what I thank you guys once again for helping us on the second wave of being on Facebook uh, we were on Facebook before, kind of got booted, and we had to start all over again. But I was very happy to um, to announce that we passed the twenty thousand follower mark uh, this past weekend. I know that's not like a massive, fantastic for you know in the, the grand scheme of things, we would have been way way higher if we hadn't got kicked off. But uh, it was yeah, thank you guys so so much for your support not only on facebook but also on youtube also on mixcloud also on i mean you guys are just uh phenomenal uh with the amount of support and the how you guys engage with the posts and it's it's just really really awesome i can i, I do beg of you please if you do not follow us on follow. facebook please click follow if you're listening on facebook right now or you're watching on facebook right now please click the follow button please 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 uh, and also click that little um it's the 
or you can click like also. I think there's like and also yeah, follow. like and follow. Like yeah. like and follow. I mean, follow is more important to me than 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 liking. I'm glad people like it, but uh, <laughs> like and follow. I, I would prefer that you like it, but I just want you to like it because yeah, we like, like you. Yes, absolutely. And if you're on YouTube, please make sure that you subscribe and also click that little bell too. So whenever I release little video clips, like the videos that you're about to that if you want to rewatch anything that happened tonight, and you can actually do that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I'll make some clips and whatnot. Maybe a little clip of uh, Uncle George. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Like and follow. Um, and of course, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I just got done doing an interview with Hans Martin Buff, who was Prince's in-house engineer from like 1996 until like 2001. And so he was the one that was at the helm uh, behind the board for emancipation, for crystal ball, for Raven to the year 2000. And also, you know, just rave joy. To, fantastic. Raven to joy. Fantastic. I mean, yeah. he also did the live video thing. That's the reason why yep. it's 2000. So, um, and so lots of really, really great stories. I will be releasing that interview uh, shortly. It may be on Tuesday. It may be uh, earlier than that because, again, we're waiting for us the announcement of a special guest who may be joining us on Tuesday, next Tuesday. If that person joins us on Tuesday, I will release the interview earlier. If not, then I'll release the interview on Tuesday. But um, it was a great interview, really, really cool, insightful interview that I had to do this morning at 9 o'clock because he's in Germany, and it was like in the late afternoon his right. time but it was early in the morning so i don't think i've ever done an interview at nine o'clock in the morning i think the weirdest interview i've ever done was that really 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 late at night when i interviewed thomas dolby which was hmm. like late at night um and i was sitting out in my car and i had to interview him and it was like in the morning for him so you know he was drinking coffee and talking to me and i was just it was it, it's <laughs> so it's always a little bit of a challenge when you have you know it was same way with jamiroquai too i think jamiroquai we actually worked it out because it was a late night thing for them and uh had the whole all of jamiroquai the entire band was on except for uh lead vocalist but the entire band jamiroquai was was on the show which was really really cool because it was just interesting to hear all their different angles on on them creating music and stuff so it's always interesting when you do these interviews with with people from overseas because it's just it's just so so different and uh yeah, absolutely yeah you know, hans was telling me the story about the radio stations over there too he's like you know when you go to you know you turn on the radio here it's like one thing it's like just top 40 or whatever and he says but you turn on a radio station over in europe and one minute it's you know it, it's it's van halen and the next thing you know they're they're playing Kanye yeah. West and the next thing you know they're playing Prince and the next thing you know they're playing classical it's like it's they're all over the map and most of the radio stations are like that so um yeah it's pretty awesome yeah it is so, awesome but uh it was an absolute fun show tonight thank you guys so so much for joining us again Hans Martin Buff an interview that will be coming up uh, shortly uh, somewhere in very very I've got to do some editing because he only wanted to do it via Zoom so I have to edit it now. I got to figure out how to do the editing. <laughs> so it's just tricky. But um, I had a lot of fun talking with all you fine, fine folks. And I uh, hope you guys had a good time listening to some of the stuff that's in the vault. And uh, hopefully we're going to have a very, very special guest for you next week. If not, we still have a special guest, Hans Martin Buff. We still got a that's great right. a great interview no matter what. So you either got gonna options. Get, so you're either going to get one awesome interview this week or two awesome interviews this week. One of these two things is happening. So either way, you got to get awesomeness. It's going to be coming. And I hope you guys had an absolute fun time. Uh, yes, if you want to hear any of those interviews, just go to SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Funkatopia. That's, of course, SoundCloud slash F-U-N-K-A-T-O-P-I-A. You can not only hear the interviews, some of the stuff there, but you also want to make sure that you support us on Patreon as well. Patreon.com slash Funkatopia because you'll have access to a lot of sound files. Right. Uh, a lot of things that are not on SoundCloud. Uh, a lot of sounds that I can't put on SoundCloud. Um, <laughs> so yeah. it's, uh, it's going to be fun. But thank you guys so, so much for spending your Tuesday with us. It's been an absolute blast. Uh, I am your host, Mr. Chris. We didn't even say that. I'm your host, Mr. Christopher. And my illustrious <laughs> co-host, Jeff Page. What's up? Uh, right. And good night. <laughs> we kind of figure you're looking at our faces. You don't need to know who we are. You don't are. need to know. Just... You don't need to know. We're just out here. Uh, 
Yes, Ben says sweet shirt. Yes, NPG Music Club shirt again from Mrs. Wellington's warehouse. The Wait, you, house. Not, not the, not the. You, yeah. Oh, yeah. He may have been talking about your shirt. You're right. He been may have about actually owl. been talking about the the owl shirt that, that <laughs> Jeff is wearing, which is pretty badass, also. So, um, yeah. So as soon as we get done, you will see this whole entire show in its entirety with all the photos. If you missed it and you're only listening to audio, uh, you can check out the video and whatnot. We will let you guys on the radio go back to your regularly scheduled music program right now. And as for you video folks, uh, please make sure that you, if you miss any part of it, just take it out. It'll be on Facebook. It will be on YouTube. And I don't know that it's going to be one of these shows that I can cut into pieces. Um, uh, probably not. Probably not. Well, actually, you absolutely can. The the magic of uh, of editing. That's all. You can do it. Yeah, you can do it. I might just send this to Michael. I might just send it to right? Michael. Michael Gabriel is like a professional. He's knocking out the park, man. My, Michael Gabriel, he just he, he just he just takes these clips and he just goes wild. It's like okay, I don't. Yeah. Know you do this. Great job too. Yeah, it's just insane. Uh, uh, also, uh, lastly, before we go, I'm sorry, I should have said this too. Uh, NPG is if you guys are in Arizona, if you guys are in Arizona, new power generation is going to be doing a show in uh, Arizona. I know that our, um, I know that our fine folks, uh, our, our producer, uh, Cammy is actually Cammie going to be in that others. show. I've got him, I forgot to, um, let, uh, I'm gonna call Tony, and uh, I was gonna tell call Tony and and Morris Hayes and, and tell them to to keep an eye out for her, uh, because she's gonna be front row. Um, October thirteenth, they're playing in Scottsdale, both in October thirteenth and fourteenth. They're gonna be playing at Scottsdale, Arizona. That's this Thursday and Friday. So if you happen to be in the Scottsdale, Arizona area, please make sure you go. And if you're not, if you're on the other side of the world in Ireland. Uh, they will be playing in Cork, Ireland on the uh, 29th. So make sure that you head to newpowergeneration.net and click on those tour dates and get some tickets and go see those shows for show. And uh, all right, guys. Adios, everybody. Uh, good night. Have a good night. And I uh, hope you had a good time. And we will see you soon, shortly, see, eventually. See you. See you later, guys. Have a fun, fun night. Get some rest. Go away.